Aha! All right, here we go. We got proof now. <laughs> Remember last episode, I had a conspiracy theory that somebody was messing with me. Someone was removing the portal corners just to get to me because it bothers me. And there was a lot of counters to that in the comments like, oh no, Etho, it just, it just happened that way. That's the way the portals were formed. Nobody's trying to get to you. But now we have proof. It wasn't a person at all. The, the corners are just falling off and leaving us messages. Let's go do some preemptive investigating, actually. So a lot of the hermits are moving portals up to the sky here. So that when we go through, if you're above Y128, when you go through the portal, you end up on top of the nether. And that's an easy way of like linking everybody's portals together without having to travel through the craziness of the nether, right? So here's our portal. And it's looking like everybody has their corners right now. So let's just note that for today and see if they fall apart in the next few episodes, because I kind of feel like they will. Yeah, let's just leave him a couple gold blocks here. Because Beef is building with, with uh, gold, actually. And he's going he's gonna to run out pretty quick. He, he gave us some pumpkins and some desperately needed nether wart here. Ah, yeah. Uh-huh, yeah, so the plan for today, everybody, our main project is going to be building an ice farm. I got an idea in mind for that. And we'll probably do a bit of work on the monstrosity today as well. Oh, the silverfish spawner is still here. That's very good. We might, uh, might make a silverfish farm, actually, at some point. Not today. Not today. Let's go to the end here. So we're going to need some supplies for the ice farm. Uh, mostly pistons and stuff, so to do that, I think we got to get a haste beacon. Get cobblestone to get iron, to get all the stuff for the, the pistons. I saw Iskel opened up a slime shop, so we can get sticky pistons if we buy some slime from him. And uh, yeah, I think Azuma and Tango, or was it Impulse, fought the dragon originally here, so that's all taken care of. Okay, so I just dug a little hole underneath the bedrock portal here. We have a nice 3x3 three three bedrock area to trap the wither underneath. I am going to cheese this first fight, because <laughs> uh, like if it gets loose, I have no way of dealing with it, and it's going to be a big problem for the other hermits. So I'm going to take it easy here. Let's do it this way. I'm, I, I believe that still works anyway. So it's a lot easier to, to fight him this way than looking for a 3x3... Three bedrock area in the, the nether, or at least I think it is. Oh no, he glitched through. Oh no, did that change? Yeah, we're in trouble. <laughs> uh oh, indeed. I brought my bow, but I don't have potions or anything. I did not think he would get free. That's a big issue. I barely even have any food. Oh dear. Oh dear. If I do it this way, we might be okay. Nice and easy. Nice and slow. Oh. <laughs> right, it's uh... Oh, I gotta use the sword at this stage. Out of food, ran out of food. Okay, it's very important he doesn't destroy our tools. Are they gone? I think. Uh, what did we lose here? We lost some stuff for sure. We got our picks, but our we did get the bow. Okay, good. So there's a chance here still. Um. What we should do... There's no crafting... No, I can make a crafting table. Okay, let's do that. Make a crafting table. Real quick here. Before his health recovers. And I'll make a diamond chest plate. And then I think we'll be tanky enough to deal with it. We got food now. Should be fine. 
Let's go get him real quick here. Oh no, he destroyed the sword! That's what's gone. <laughs> oh, I could have killed him with like just a couple shots and it's gone. No. Okay. This is gonna be a lot harder again then. <laughs> Especially since he ran off again. Um, we're getting a lot of wither roses this way at least. Actually, I'm gonna put the, the tools away. Just in case this goes sour again. And there's a good chance it will because... The Endermen actually uh, kept them both for us. Yes, we did it. Whew. <laughs> yeah, he was not able to recover. The Endermen kept damaging him, so he was uh, he stayed low. Oh, and we got the Wither's Head. Oh, that's cool. That was way harder than I was expecting. <laughs> Should have made potions. Should have prepared better. Just wanted to hop into creative here to try it out again. So I think the mistake I made is I did a two block gap and there's only supposed to be a one. I'm pretty sure. Let's just make sure. Let's, let's figure it out here so I don't do that again. Then, yeah, now if I hit him, he doesn't bounce out of there. He's stuck. Aha. <laughs> Whoopsies. Easy beacon. We're gonna combine our Fortune 3 Efficiency 4 with an Unbreaking 3 Efficiency 4 pick so that we can instant mine with the Haste 2 beacon. Okay, Bamboo. Awesome. So check it out. We did a decent amount of mining here. We got back up to level 27 just from like mining redstone and stuff. We Wore down the Fortune 3 pick, though, to, to a nub, pretty much. Gotta get, like, a mending book or something for it. Uh, here's our goodies. We got a bunch of cobblestone for making pistons. And a bunch of other random stuff here, too. Pistons. Okay, so I repaired our Fortune 3 pick and did a, a bunch more speed mining there. Got more stuff, more ores, more experience. I thought I'd give you a quick little rundown on my enchantment strategy today. Because a lot of people were wondering how I got such good stuff so early on. <laughs> and part of it for sure was luck. There was a bit of that involved. But I do have a general strategy I follow. Um, so the pick, the shovel, and the axe all share the same enchantment. So those three are on the same one. So if it says effic efficiency four for the pick, it'll always say that for the shovel as well. Um, I usually will pick the pick if I see Silk Touch or Fortune 3. Shovel if I see Silk Touch. And I usually like getting Silk Touch on the axe as well. Um, so if I don't see that on those, I try not to pick them. For the helmet, I'll usually only pick it if I see Protection 4 or Respiration 3. Um, and then for the chest plate, I'll pick if I see Protection 4 if I need it. Legs, Protection 4. Boots, I'll pick Protection 4 or if I see Feather Falling or Depth Strider 3. Books are good if you get like efficiency, sharpness, or uh, unbreaking are usually the things I go for. Bow, I like to see infinity when I pick it. And fishing rod, you want to see luck of the C3 or Lear 3 at the, at the very least. So yeah, usually I'll check like 10 different items and then pick the one that looks the best. Oh yeah, sword always has to be looting 3 too. This is like a requirement. So, um... Out of these, I don't have an enchanted chest plate, so let's go for that. Wow, look at this guy. So I paid a visit to the shopping district, and things are really coming alive here. Lots of shops are popping up. Uh, we got to make a couple purchases here. Doc has a mending store over there. Beef did a bone zone. <laughs> I think this is like a mini game, but he's also got a souvenir shop over here for wool. We need wool. This is probably where I'll come. Um, Corellis, I think, made a competing mending store, and where we gotta go is Iskel's Slime Shop here. This is a pretty cool thing, though. So this is the Mushroom Island that we spawned at, kind of at the center of the world. And because it's on a Mushroom Island, we don't have to worry about hostile mobs spawning here and, like, blowing up the shops or anything like that. So it's, it's nice and safe. We got the beautiful green grass here if we change out the mycelium. And all in all, it's... It's going to work out great, I think, for a shop town. Um, how's he doing? 
Oh, looks like he's all restocked here. Okay, good. Good, good. So we got to make a bunch of sticky pistons today, probably. I'm going to buy a lot. It's still one diamond for 32. Okay. We'll snag all these. Whoop. I think I'm going to get another row here. Another, another nine diamonds. Yeah, that should be enough. Okay, hostile mobs can't spawn here except for phantoms. The, the one exception. Let's buy uh, too many books, actually. Should be good. I know they cost a little more than uh, they should. <laughs> a doc, I think, bought out Karelsa's cheaper ones at five diamonds each, and now he's reselling them for nine diamonds each at a profit. But uh, they're the only vending books, so I gotta buy them. Well, after all those preparations, guys, I think we are finally ready to start working on our ice farm here. So I made a portal on top of the ceiling to get to this ice spike biome again. This is where I was originally thinking about building the farm, like down there, where I've been mining it. Uh, but now that I built a portal up in the sky here and looked around, that actually looks like a pretty good spot over there. It's nice and flat and wide open. Yep, yep. So I think this is definitely our spot. It's nice and flat. We got plenty of space. And we won't need to do much terraforming here. Just the odd little bit of dirt needs to go away. Okay, everybody. So let's get into it now. Let's talk about the ice farm design we're going to be going with here. So I've always wanted to make an ice farm that grows like icicles. That goes downward, which is... Uh, if you think about it, you've probably have never seen one. <laughs> There's a reason for it. They're they're probably not very efficient. Um, yeah, usually ice farms, the water freezes in place and you just mine it there. Some ice farms will push ice like sideways or maybe even upwards like my ice cube one I did. The, the 10 by 10 by 10 ice cube. It collects it all together and pushes it upward. But generally, you don't see ice that goes downward because it's a little tricky to do. Yeah, so this first design I came up with, we're not going to actually go with it. I just want to show you it because I thought it was interesting. The idea is we would have about an infinite water source here that would freeze to ice. And then when it turns to ice, that's when we go for the harvest. And we do that by running to a block, to a sticky piston, and then we get a piston that faces downward over here. Okay, and then we also do another observer here with a piece of redstone dust on top. So check this out, when the block forms over here, it does that and pushes it downward. And that fits within just like three blocks of space plus one for the water. So it's pretty compact. The only problem with this design, well, there's a few, <laughs> but one of the big ones is like, if it runs out of space for the ice to go, the piston gets left behind here and then it's difficult to reset, like if that happens. So instead, we're gonna go for a much simpler design that ditches the observers, because the observer is kind of complicated. They they add a bit of bulk to it as well, make it harder to tile. Um, we're gonna replace the observers with a hopper clock that runs when we're in the area, and that'll just make things a lot simpler for us. So we're gonna go up 12 blocks here. At the 12th block is where I'm gonna place the ice. This is where it's gonna form. And from that, I think we go out two blocks here on the side. The idea is we're going to have these long line stretches of ice that'll look like icicles uh, when they form. Um, we're going to have the sticky piston here and then, oh, well, it's going to be hard to place. <laughs> Let's go down over here. We've got to somehow place the regular one facing down here. Which is tricky, because if I hold shift on the scaffolding, it wants me to fall through. But yeah, we'll do that. That's fine. Okay, we'll go back up here. That's not a scaffolding. Okay, so ice here. Uh, the important thing is, the water needs access to the skylight in order to form the ice. So that's why we can't have the piston directly over top of it. We have to move it sideways and then down. Oh, this works pretty good, actually. Yeah, if I just lower the scaffolding a bit, I can just walk along here and do it. Okay, so check it out. I worked out a few more of the details here, and I think we got the basic layout to the farm pretty much figured out. So we're going to have water on both sides here that turns to ice. Uh, it's basically the same thing, just mirrored, right? Um, 
It freezes pretty quickly because we do have the seed blocks here, which allows the ice to form faster. Um, we're going to have to run redstone over top of the sticky pistons, I believe. Let's do that on both sides. And then in the middle, when the piston extends here, the downward facing one, we're going to power it with this wire over here. We run this across. Each of these sections we build is going to be 15 blocks long because that's as far as the redstone reaches before it needs to be powered again. Okay, let's actually try this out though before we get any further, just to make sure it works here. So we want this at two ticks, I believe. They all extend. They push the ice down, it looks like, and then the water is able to refill because we have some water sources hidden under the ice here and here. And all along the middle, under this wire, we have water as well. Looks good. And another thing we'll try to do with this build, we're going to cover as much of the pistons as we can, just so it looks like it's one big giant, like, ice glacier. And then we'll probably throw some snow and stuff over top of this as well to make it look a little more aesthetically pleasing when it's all said and done. All right, so check it out. We got three sections built in total now, and they didn't take all that long to do, actually. Uh, they're going pretty smoothly. Um, each of these sections has 30 water blocks in that can turn to ice, so that's 90 total at the moment. And they're 16 blocks long, each one, so that's 48 with three together. Um, you can kind of see the icicles at different uh, stages of growth here as well. And I think they look pretty cool, right? And they're a little bit 3D-ish because we have the other set side by side with them. I think it looks cool. As far as uh, harvesting goes, we'll probably run underneath here with our pick facing up and we'll just like chew it away and then the ice might land on some hopper minecarts or something. I think what we'll do is do 12 sections in total and we'll form them into a square around us here. So we'll have a side there, another side here, another side here. And then we'll turn this like into a fortress of solitude. We'll use this ice farm as our walls. But anyways, I got a lot of building to do here, guys. It's a big project. I'm going to put on a movie in the background or something as I build it. And I will see you when it's done or when it's close to done or when I give up. One of those things. Where will our story go from here? Etho, our protagonist, has a long history of not finishing his projects, and now he has a daunting task ahead of him. An ice farm he was not prepared for. So large, so many pistons. Will he do it? What will happen? I should probably get to work, shouldn't I? <laughs> no. Why are you looking at all my... <laughs> it's what I do, man. That's how I learn uh, learn people, you know? <laughs> I, I can tell a lot about a person by looking at their base. You view the world as abstract. You, you don't go, like, definite, like, this is glowstone. You go, this is nether. You know? <laughs> yeah. And in the nether, there's also ice, because... Yeah. And records, because that makes sense. And... Cyan Terracotta because it's dark. Well, this one chest says so much about you, Eskil. You have no idea. It does? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, just to test you then. What would one put in a junk chest? Oh, you can't. You now you looked. Oh, was I not supposed to? Are <laughs> you supposed to tell me about myself through just. You've ruined it. That's, well, that's more telling you about myself if you're asking the questions. I guess, but... You wanted me to okay. guess what was in there. I see. What blocks would I put in gravel, sand, and dirt? Well, I would hope gravel, sand, and dirt. You might... Since you're abstract, you might put sandstone and coarse dirt and stuff in there as well, you know. Well, let's let's find out a little bit more about Iskel. Ah, okay. Yeah, you're very abstract. Even glass bottles went in there. You know, yeah, glass the, uh, and, and colored price. glass is a stretch, but glass bottles is a whole new level. <laughs> there is no other place for them. It's, well, junk? I don't know. No, but they're not junk. Oh, they're, Tech? they're also Potions? Like junk. Do you have a potions chest? What do you think? I've named my bird over there. And here's a hint. I was going to name him the salesman of the year, 
Salesman but... of Doom. Now I was gonna name him Salesman of the Year, but he sucked. He was he's a bad sale seller. Failure of Doom? I don't know. You think you think you know me, don't you? You think I'm that abstract and easy? No. Obviously. Diorite of Doom? And no, obviously I named him John. Okay. <laughs> That's either a reference or um you were well, or you were baiting me there pretty hard. <laughs> I was baiting you. <laughs> Got him. Uh-huh. Well, it's all right. I learned something new about you there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Got him. Come on. You are going to jump across the bamboos like your idea for a minigame. Oh, but that's really hard. With no stopping or stopping? You can stop if you, if you want to play it like that. It's, it's, it is timed. It's a timed minigame. <laughs> that was terrible. Oh, that was pretty bad. I think we should have a sub rule that you can cut... You can cut them down. Like, if there's one that's grown like that, you should be able to cut it off, right? No, no cutting. Unless, like, you can't make the jump. Like, if it's only one block, that's doable still. Oh, my control key broke. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. Yes, you are. I could probably do it better if I look down. Nope. Oh, I didn't make it. Two left. I got to the M2. Whoa! Can you pass the first two? I can't even get up the scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I slipped off! No! Every time I've looked up at you, you just fall down here in the beginning. I don't have the rhythm to it. Oh. No, I'm exceptionally bad at this, actually. Oh no, I can't make this jump. There you go. It's easy if you don't sprint. Actually, I oh, oh. got a sprint. Oh, wow. Well. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, I'm gonna run. No stop stopping. Moving. No stopping. Oh, I'll get every single one. Yes, go. Oh, this is so satisfying. No! Oh, no. 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 I got in my way. Rip. I got the last ones. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it's actually it's actually pretty tricky too. <laughs> yeah, this was not my game. Oh wow! Yeah. Hello, Etho. Hello. <laughs> too harsh. <laughs> too excited. What? <laughs> Usually, you know, when I'm excited, I expect like there's an like, excited like excited a, response, like, not deadpan silence. But okay. There's like a one. There's like a one second pause, and they're like, "Hello." Ito, I've heard that you are the Iceman. Yes, I am the Iceman. Also, what does that... also the Ice Queen. You're the, you're the Ice Queen now as well? Yeah, yeah, both in one. I've heard that you have your toll road. Mm -hmm, the toll network. The toll network. And I would be interested in connecting up not just my base, but also Stress's base to that. Oh, okay, okay. That sounds like a double purchase to me. A double purchase, absolutely. Yeah. So how does this work? Do I pay up front? Up front, do I pay obviously. After the work is done. Oh, okay. Hold on. I do accept things besides diamonds, though. It don't, don't, don't follow me. It's a private property. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I thought of a solution. <laughs> no. Do you have a trapdoor on you? Oh no! I can't reach the boat. No. Wait, I got another boat, though. Boats Ooh. suck these days. Yeah, they used to be able to place them, like, anywhere you wanted. Now it's, like, so specific. <laughs> Look. Darn it. Nope. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> I've just collected some payments. Okay. First of all. No, <laughs> my boat! <laughs> I saved one. No! Did you actually get it? I got one. That, that was quite heroic. <laughs> that was quite heroic. Okay, so for payment, as payment for, for these for the toll road connections of two bases, I was thinking I'll pay you in green. Oh. Look at that. More That's green than that though, right? A lot more? Um 
There you go. Now I don't have any more. That's kind of like light green. I want to like really feel the green. Okay. <laughs> so annoying. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Now you can show off with it. That's the that's the trick. If if you can show off with the payment, then you know that there is enough payment. There has to be enough that I never get yeah. to zero. I got oh. the zero SQL. Uh oh. I think I need more. Have some more. Have some more. Never should reach zero. <laughs> that's the test. I think you got it. You got it. I think we're okay now. Just yeah. because I'm such a good sport. Here, you can have some more. All right. Awesome. It was at this moment our protagonist Etho was faced with yet another daunting task, seemingly endless. Hundreds of blocks of ice road needed to be laid on schedule. He had a customer waiting. Would he get it done? The episode time is almost out. What's gonna happen? It's actually finished already. I don't even know why I'm asking the question. Yep. The brown's not really a color. <laughs> Did you know that? It's why, orange. Why do you have... It's dark orange. That's all it is. It's not brown. It's it's dark orange. That's wrong. That's just wrong. I learned something new today as well. What? Your breath is horrible. <sighs> For a job well done, Etho. Here is... You might even say Here's this is tip. worth tipping for. Oh no, you yeah. dropped it. It's okay, we, we got it designed for this, Isco. Are we both in the boat? Yeah. Yay! Oh, and I actually got him. Here? Nice. Yeah, my inventory was full of targets. So this is it. This is working. Yeah. If I have one, if I may have one quality suggestion, right? I would like to hear it. It's this here. What if I want to turn left there? It's not the easiest thing. That I is true. That That's true. Crossings should be like dirt. Oh, oh no! I feel oh, like no. I feel like signs could be useful here too. Oh yeah, I'm still I'm still with you. Why do we get ejected? It's so weird. It's the sunken boat thing. Ah, oh, my boat! Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey, Etho. Etho. Don't do it. Don't you do it? <laughs> oh, you almost got me to do that. You burnt it. <laughs> you burnt it whole. Yeah, that tricked you. Here you go. Thank you. New belt. All right, everybody. So check it out. We are back at our Fortress of Solitude here with our walls being made as we speak. Uh, it's pretty cool. I like it a lot, actually. <laughs> uh, so you can see we got some gaps in the in the pattern. So like in the corners, there's a big gap. And then between each section, there's a one block gap. What we'll probably end up doing is like decorating this a little bit. Uh, not today, but later. Like maybe we'll add some structure that builds up to there and kind of covers that up. Uh, also, I want to like drape some snow hanging down from the tops there because it's all blue right now And I think a little bit of color mixed in would make it look a lot better than than currently We got to run the collection system. So hopper minecarts running Underneath the ground here maybe to, to grab the ice and then we got to store it somewhere And then we have all the space in the middle to, to do stuff with here still so I'm thinking we set up some Farms that maybe take up a bit of space like tree farms could go here uh, something that takes a bit of time to do so that as we're here, we can watch the ice grow and collect it and stuff. I think it's cool. That's the plan. Now, unfortunately, I hate to do it to you guys, but I think we're kind of out of time for this episode. <laughs> so I'm going to maybe skip the monstrosity work for today. We'll try to do it next episode instead. But I hope you enjoyed today. Thank you for watching. Until next time, take care. Have a good day. Bye-bye.